wanted to talk to now talk about sports psych and, and the idea of goaltenders being consistently in the zone to be their best. And at at what level do you and at what time and how do you advocate managing the goaltenders in terms of when and if and how you're going to change them during a game? I talked a lot, Dave. Do you want to go? Go ahead, <laughs> I'll Dave. Go after, I'll go after you if you want. Could you cl clarify your question, uh, Wally? Well, at, at, at the NHL level, you, you've sort of got a 1A or a 1 and a 2. Yeah. And you might have a 1A and a 1B. But in the end, there's a 1 with a sensitive ego that you don't want to yank so you play a game of managing the emotions of the the goaltenders and it's the coach's decision in the end and the one thing that i find watching the nhl and watching the flames is the inconsistency of goalies early in terms of their readiness letting in soft early goals at the NHL level. But being, yeah, that's, they, yeah, that's definitely a trend. Obviously, every start of the season, the chemistry is not there. The, uh, you know, the scouting is not there. There's new teams that have new players uh, uh, on, on different, different teams, some that are clicking already on a power play. So the numbers in October, I know Kiprasov, it was very criticized early on, um, you know, his his October numbers and, and early November and things. How come? How come mid November things stabilize and the numbers go down? I mean, there's there's something about, and that's where I come back to the uh, D zone coordination and trusting trusting, um, you know, what happens in front of you. Um, back in the day, Patrick Roy with the Montreal Canadiens, he needed a guy named Sylvain Lefebvre playing on defense for him. And when he moved on to Colorado, one of the first things that Colorado asked him is, who do we need to win a Stanley Cup besides Ray Bork? Well, they needed to go get Sylvain Lefebvre because the demands of Patrick Roy saying, I trust what he does behind me or while I'm focusing on the puck and they were able to win a second Stanley Cup together and and funny funny uh, story but you just look at who the defenseman coach was for the Florida Panthers this year it was Sylvain Lefebvre so you, you have that coordination and, and that understanding of who can you trust in the D zone and in the start of a season that with new players and every year I, I, to have this stability is is key so the teams that have new players on teams and it happens more and more now with ufas that are going all over the place um it it takes time and it takes time to build that chemistry and trust in the d zone so for me as a number one goalie if you can play through those moments and not change your demeanor but trusting the process and if there is a level of patience where your number one guy is part of the solution and not put too much pressure on you know it was funny because in, in calgary if our goalie our number one goalie had a great game it was our goalie was amazing tonight and the next night if he wasn't so good Dave, your goalie was horseshit. So yesterday it was our goalie because he was good, but today it's your goalie because <laughs> he was horseshit. Yeah. I don't need to say who the head coach general manager was at the time. <laughs> well, I think that's that's an era, and I don't know if that occurs today at the NHL level, but I don't know. I'm not even close to it. Um. But that 
that requires uh, you have to wear a completely different hat as a goalie coach. You have to know who the head coach is. And, you know, you can share the story, Dave, and it, how you were able to get the goalie to cope with the firm, stern, direct nature of Sutter. Well, you need to, definitely, you need to focus on your details, on your preparation, and the ability to block it out, and to, um, you know, true number one goalies are able to park it, assess what happened after a game, and go back in there the next night, and, you know, to, to, to see the sun come up the next morning and just to be a warrior, not a worrier about what other people think. And I would always say, you know, to certain, certain goalies, what other people think about you is none of your business. And just focus on the process. Let's get back to work. Uh, there will be highs, there will be lows. We can expect that. It's not always going to be your way. You're not going to go, you know, Kip in Kiprasov's uh, situation, you're not going to go 73 and 0 all the, the all year long. So there's the ups and downs of an NHL season. There's the back to back nights um, with Mike Keenan as a head coach overplaying Mika Kiprasov and trying to get the backup in. And Curtis McElhinney or Brian Boucher back in the day, they get they would get to play once a month on a back to back night. And, you know, that you need to manage that. And, and the biggest thing to me is, you know, managing if you are in that position of, of playing so many games and it doesn't happen much anymore. Uh, I think the, the, the number would be around 63 games as a maximum. Uh, but back in those days to have that number one guy. You really needed to manage the time that you were out on the ice. It was more about quality time versus quantity of time. And, uh, you know, I, the example I do give was when Marc-Andre Fleury was in, was in Pittsburgh at the start of his career, and he was trying to become a number one goalie with the organization. But I was watching his morning skates, and he was staying out and taking one-timers and one-timers and one-timers by the defenseman at the end of practice. And I I was going to try to, to catch up with him and to let him know, it's like, you, you, if you want to transition into being a number one goalie, you, got, you need to get off the ice. After 25 minutes, you get off the ice. And everything is game-related, not practice related he had so much fun and as a 39 year old goalie now i mean he, he loves the game and he's a kid at heart but you need to make adjustments in your preparation time dave one of the stories i recall you shared uh, in, in related to a tough coach it had something to do with the messenger the message and the messenger yes yeah i mean Somebody, again, the best coaches are the best thieves, but with Daryl, there was always a message. And his delivery about the message that he wanted to, to share, his delivery was a grenade. And his, obviously, people skills and the way that the delivery was sent out uh, was very harsh, very brash. But there's always a message. So just to consider, focus on what the message is here. Don't focus on the delivery because the delivery is going to be a bomb. It's going to be a grenade. And if you get rattled with the delivery, then you will let that affect you. Listen to the message, learn from the message, but then let it go. Um, I have a, a great visual. It's a... It's, uh, it's one of those eye watches and what it says on the eye watch. And I send that to many of my goalies. It's let it hurt, let it heal, let it go. And to be able to let it go, um, 
after a bad performance or after a bad goal and stuff, that to me is priceless for a goalie to keep on, you know, to weather the storm and to keep on uh, finding finding a way, finding a way to, to make the next save. So um, listen to the message, not the delivery with Daryl Sutter. That was, that was the key thing. I got the question about most teams, and Pasco, I'm sure, at UBC, uh, but I know the Flames and every NHL team as a sports psychologist. How do they fit into this formula? Well, at UBC, they, Laura, is, we do have a sports psych, um, and uh, she comes in and, and deals with the athletes. I'm not at UBC now. I'm retired from there, but the... Um, what she does is she comes in and, and, and understands the players from the beginning. So what does this player need? How does, how does she like to receive feedback? How does he like to receive feedback? How does, you know, how do you want to shape things with each player? And that takes time. And then during their meeting, she would then formulate those meetings to meet the objective of that player or what that player likes to talk about. Um, you know, I, I echo what Dave says. There's a, a football player actually said this, and I have a clip as well that that where he said it, and he can't say it better than this. And Dave uh, and Sutter is the perfect example. Hear the message, not the tone. Um, and he was talking about or the football player was went, went offside. He's been co- he's been in the league nine years. He goes it ha- he goes it happens too often. The coach is coaching. He goes all the media. He says you guys are taking it out of context. I'm a pro- professional. I, you know, I work with my family and, and, uh, I understand what I need to do. I made a mistake. It shouldn't have happened. He's the coach he's coaching. So here, the message, not the tone was something that was very, very important. And as far as getting, um, uh, like I said, at the very beginning for a goaltender, whether they're young or whether they're a pro it's, you're chasing a feeling. You got to get that feeling that you're confident, you're comfortable and you're clear when you go out onto the ice so that you you have a focus on the task at hand. Um, the book that I I linked into the comments uh, called Score for Life by Jim Fannin, I think any, and I've recommended this to many goaltenders by the time they turn 13, should read that book, including coaches. And it just talks about the arenas that athletes compete in, hockey, school, social. So they're you know, and their mental and physical fitness. They they compete in four arenas. If they have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, now it's a fifth arena. And it continues to get bigger and bigger. So the, the whole idea is how do you switch gears and then go to practice and mentally prepare to have a solid practice knowing that you, you yourself are going to customize um, your training for the day based on what you see on the board and ask the question, what's in it for me? And what am I going to test myself in doing in this scenario? And uh, I think those are really important to, to kind of get your mind focused on what you're doing. But again, it comes down to introducing some of those details mentally to the to the goalie so they know how to flex those mental muscles. And then you can add more things to it. But I find when you create lists and create this and create that, and start writing on your equipment and you start adding all of this stuff, it ends up being almost superstition versus preparation. So, it, you know, when you come down to figure out what what this like Mitch Korn actually had a video with Braden Holpe and he said this guy takes two hours to get ready. But he goes, this has been a, a career or a lifetime of trying to find what makes him feel a certain way when he goes onto the ice. And I think that that I mean, if you feel good and everything's going well, you know, in your mind, you you can do anything really well. But, geez, if you get into an argument with someone you know, you're, you're pretty upset. You can't do anything well because your mind is still agitated about uh, how to fix a problem or an issue.